I'm delighted to be here. I certainly enjoyed my time here last year and have had a, a wonderful time putting a program together for tonight and over the weekend. The medicine wheel seems to interest a lot of people. How many of you know everything there is to know about the medicine wheel? No hands, okay. Well, the medicine wheel is about finding peace and balance. Now, a lot of the work that I do, I actually have retired from some of my work, only to pick up more work. Uh, finding peace and balance is very important for all of us, but sometimes we don't stop long enough to realize it. Anybody experience that? Yes? Okay. So I don't uh, proclaim to be an expert on this topic, far from it. Um, I'm here as a student and a learner just like you are. The only difference is I've had some experiences and some teachings that perhaps you've not had that opportunity yet. So um, I hope that what I can share with you this evening will give you another tool, another gift, a little information to cause you to want to look further into this topic. When we look at the medicine wheel, we want to look at the origins of it. A lot of people don't realize that in order to do that, we've got to go way, way back, way back. The ancient civilizations looked up in order to navigate, to measure time for spiritual guidance, for even the time of planting. Right now is a planting time for a lot of us, for health and for balance. They looked up to the stars, to the galaxies. Now, this science came to be archaeoastronomy. Did you know that was a thing? No. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a real thing. Had I been in school and saw that as an option, I would have probably gone for it. Very interesting. The whole study is how to uncover how the past civilizations understood what is going on above us in the celestial heavens. And now they have turned to the medicine wheels of the indigenous peoples in order to understand how they have a grasp of heavens, of the heavens. Wait a minute. The medicine wheels and heavens, is that right? Huh. How about that? So, in order to look at this, we have to go back, way back. Now, the earliest literature was 39,500 BC. That was a minute ago. Been a while, hadn't it? But the religion of the sun originated before that. We don't know how long before that at all. And this, this, was, this is the oldest religion. It viewed the sun as the life source in a spiritual sense. Any of you familiar with the religion of the sun? A little bit? It's fascinating. In Hindu, it's referred to as the sun dynasty in Hindu mythology. It may be connected to Atlantis. This is the one that really got me. This religion of the sun existed far before written word. It existed in a lot of different places. And there's speculation that the civilizations across the earth shared these similar interests and beliefs. And they were shared because sea travelers went. Well, this is why it got interesting. The symbol over there on the side of the slide, the cross with the circle, is a symbol for the religion of the sun. That was in Egypt. It's been found all over the world. 
Now, when, that, when I talk about before, before uh, literature, we're talking about the end of the last ice age and, and civilizations that existed before this one that we don't know anything about. There's a lot we don't know. And I find as an educator and a teacher that the more I know, the more I know I don't know. And frankly, that's a really good place to be. Because when we know we don't know, we're open to learning. So I really like this. This comes off of the spiritualsun.com website. And I would encourage you to go look at it. Because it brings together a lot of things that we've been um, exposed to. And we had no idea that this was the origin. Very interesting. But it views the sun as an outward manifestation of the spiritual sun, an embodiment of the design source of creation and symbol of higher consciousness, and understands its annual cycles through the solstices and equinox to allegorically show the path to enlightenment. This is why ancient practitioners align their sacred sites and ceremonies to the sun's path with such precision. So you may be sitting there saying, I thought this talk was on the medicine wheel. What happened? I'm going to tell you. When we go back and back and back and start looking at things that took place, the first writings were here in the religion of the sun. The next thing that happens here in history, written history, that we know is that the Hindu faith came to be. Isn't that right? One of the, the uh, first, the oldest medicine wheel is said to be the Bighorn medicine wheel that's in Wyoming. Now, I thought we were talking Europe and the East and all that. Now we're in Wyoming. Isn't that bizarre? This is a time when there was no TV, no Internet. They couldn't tweet each other across the pond. And yet, these remarkable... Things were going on in all these world places. It was even going on in Africa. We see these markers, the medicine wheel, uh, Naptoplea, uh, Stonehenge, all these things happening a long, long time ago that followed in this path. And just for measurement, I noted Judaism and several other uh, belief systems that came about before 1 A.D. Kind of remarkable. So Bighorn Medicine Circle, and it was called a circle, um, was called a medicine wheel the first time by non-Indian, non-Native Americans that saw the structure of it. You see on the top picture, looks kind of like a wagon wheel, doesn't it? There's, in that circle, that's about 80 feet across. There are 28 spokes, if you will. Those are all rocks laid out. And then the other little things that you see there are cairns, C-A-I-R-N-S, which is typically a marker uh, to denote a particular direction, uh, to help people uh, well, in direction, and, and they're used in travel all the time, or have been. Um, a lot of the indigenous tribes call that a sacred hoop. Now, through, I just love this word, archaeoastronomy. The sun and celestial connections were discovered. And now we know that the Shoshone, the Crow, or the Cheyenne, probably the Cheyenne, were the ones that built this, some seven, uh, around 7,000 BC. That really stretches time for me. A lot further back than I had thought. This picture was taken uh, of Bighorn in 2011. Now, what you see, the cloth that you see hanging there, those were likely prayer ties, where people had gone and left a prayer, put tobacco in a prayer tie, in a cloth, and tied it to the fence. 
because it's seen as a sacred site. The next two medicine wheels that are uh, considered the largest and most significant uh, are actually in Canada. And Majorville is at the top there, probably by the Blackfeet tribe in around 2500 BC. Moose Mountain Medicine Wheel, probably by the Cheyenne around 600 BC. So these things have been around for a while. Okay, then I began to wonder. When they were saying these things have been around that long, I started wondering if they had any connection here. What do you recognize in that picture? Stonehenge is the top right. That's in England. Naptplaya is in uh, ancient Africa or Egypt which is the top left. New Grange is in Ireland, fascinating place. All of these are related to the medicine wheels. Now we're gonna come back stateside. I know at least one person here has been there, two people, you know what this is? You know where it is? This is an amazing, huge, sacred space in New Mexico called Chaco Canyon. The Anasazi were there, an ancient tribe. Actually the most ancient on Turtle Island that we know of. But now I'm beginning to wonder about what we know and what we don't know. And just as an FYI, all these circles you see, most of them are called kivas. They were places of prayer. Um, and the walls, this, this has been, um, has deteriorated over the years. But some of these buildings were seven stories high. Some thousand years ago. If you go there at night, this was a time lapse of the night sky that you could actually see the star path. And two years ago, um, I had the opportunity to go to Chaco Canyon and I was there in, and in Sedona over summer solstice. Talk about energy, incredible place of energy. And to go see this place and to sit down in one of those kivas and offer tobacco and do a prayer jettisoned me back. And I could see people there in their daily work. And I could watch and see how they were planning and the, the, the grids they have for summer solstice, winter solstice, and the connection with at least three planets in their movement, told them about different things. The medicine wheel does the same thing. The medicine wheel is lined up with the earth, with the cardinal directions, and with these systems. If you ever get a chance to go out there, go. Absolute sacred ground. Now this also is very interesting. The first picture you see there is from Chaco Canyon. The cross and circle over there is from Europe, from the east. The spiral is also something that's found in both places from thousands and thousands of years ago. Now, are you thinking that I'm just crazy? That this is just a myth? Or is this beginning to make you go, hmm, I want to look into that a little bit more. Anyone interested in looking into it a little bit more? Okay. 
The Cherokees say that the medicine wheel basically uh, represents the natural cycles of life, the basic way in which the natural world, including humans, moves and evolves, the power of birth, death, and rebirth, and I think most significantly, this right here, each individual's path toward personal growth and realization. And why I think that is so significant is that we live in a world where things are a tad out of balance, would you say? Anybody agree with that? Yeah. Do you think your world could take a little bit more balance? Your community? Your life? Yeah, me too. So you've seen the history of how the medicine wheels came to us. The fact that they are part of that connection with the heavens in order to be able to survive and find the balance. So who was it that said Potawatomi to me earlier? Uh -huh. So I told you I had Potawatomi. So today, you may see things like this. Now this tribe over here may tell you this is the way it's supposed to be. And this tribe over here may say, no, 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 it's supposed to be this way. And you're gonna see evidence of that. Truth of the matter is that most of the information that any particular tribal community will use in their medicine wheel is either the same or at least comparable to the next tribe over. There's some differences, but there's gonna be these tribes started at different times. They have different philosophies. So the small picture, looking at things with mouse vision, is to see how the tribe does, the Potawatomi put their medicine wheel together. And to only see that. The bigger picture is, what does that mean to us? Life is, is in a circle. All of life is a circle. We can measure the directions, east, south, west, north, in a circle, and they're cyclical. We go to them in a cycle, in a circle. Um, spring in the east, summer, autumn, winter, it's a circle, it's a cycle. It comes around again. Um, the, this particular one shows the sacred uh, herbs that are used by typically most tribes, uh, tobacco, um, cedar, sage, and sweetgrass. So if we were looking at this, we might ask what can that tell us? Okay, so there's spring, summer, fall, winter, all right? Has it ever been spring and you felt like you were in winter? Not because of the temperature, but because of your mood? Because things weren't going so good? Because you felt isolated? All kinds of reasons that we may feel that we're still in winter when the rest of the earth is in spring. This is a good barometer for us to ask ourselves, where are we? Where are we in this? Are we in our spring? How many of you think you're in your spring right now? Okay. Anybody in summer? Anybody in fall? Winter? I, fi I find that uh, uh, people like myself who uh, live with sad or seasonal affective disorder, that winter can last a long time. So we have to take some extra steps to not let it, right? Um, but as you can see, there's a lot that we can get just from this one picture. The Lakota Sioux, 
This is somewhat what their medicine wheel looks like. I don't like it particularly because it's too linear for me. I want to see it turned at an angle. So this messes with me. <laughs> the thing to look at again is the different things that it represents and um, uh, our body, different parts of our body, our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual self, all those parts are in there. Our cycles of life. The cream medicine wheel, they got very wordy. But basically what they're saying in here is pretty much the same thing. There's an organization in uh, Colorado Springs that put the 12 steps into a circle. And it's the medicine wheel and 12 steps. And along about, I think it was about 2003, um, I had the opportunity to become a fire starter for the program and I've actually been running this program ever since. Uh, it's a good program because it puts everything in a circle. The 12 steps fit in a circle quite well. And when we run it in Louisville, it's for anyone dealing with any kind of addiction issues or uh, dysfunctional family systems, or they just want to get uh, their house in order, so to speak. So in that, in the east, the beginning, that springtime, find the creator. In the south, in that infancy is in the east. As a youth, finding ourselves, what what is that time for, that youth time? That's exactly what's going on. In the West, finding relationship with others. How do we fit in with the bigger picture as an adult? And in the North, finding the elders' wisdom. And all those steps fit in there quite nicely. Now, those of you who are familiar with Eric Erickson's Cycles of Life, anybody here familiar with those? I think pretty much a lot of people understand those. These fit in there. In mental health, the medicine wheel has been used. The medicine wheel has been used all over in corporate use, in uh, health issues. Um, so you've got, I don't know, can you read that from there? Um, to the east, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. Um, community, meaning and finding meaning and purpose, history and stories, sense of a belonging. Now these aren't in the same places I would put them, or in the same places that perhaps my friend Ray, who works with the Lakota, uh, would put them. But there, you could certainly use that to be able to teach concepts and help someone in their growth, or us help ourselves in our growth. Now, they got really crazy on this one. Um, someone had just gotten a graphic degree, I think, <laughs> <laughs> and they were showing off. Um, I like this one because there's, there's something very important about it that's on the outer circle, and that's the seven grandfather's teachings. This is about the values that the tribes hold. And across the board, the values are a little different from tribe to tribe, but they are all, um, again, compatible and comparable. So if you do your own medicine wheel, you, you too can make one like this. <laughs> Now that's our logo with the medicine wheel incorporated into it. And we also look to the wisdom of Christ's life teachings, which is pre-Christianity, Buddhism, and the Native American uh, spiritual wisdom. 
and we've evolved to a point where it's mostly the Native American, but the whole process of us starting out showing these three different belief systems is that they are compatible. That the three can sit down in a circle and talk to one another and it be peaceful. And if we could do that, anybody could do that. So let's look at the teachings of the medicine wheel and what we can take from it. Black Elk was a, a very interesting fella. Uh, a guy Sue. He was a teacher. He was a lot of things, but a lot of people looked up to him. And I love this piece that he said. Um, this first piece, which is the most important, is that which comes within the souls of people when they realize their relationship, their oneness with the universe and all its powers. And when they realize that at the center of the universe dwells the great spirit and that this center really is everywhere. It is within each one of us. Now the wisdom we've been talking about from medicine wheel that circle and cycle, we all already possess. And things get knocked to kilter for us when we're not paying attention to it. So, in the old days, the teachers, the elders, the uncles, the grandmothers, grandfathers, they'd all sit in a circle and the one that was teaching would take that stick and start drawing in the dirt in front of them and draw a circle. And one of the, the young people might have said, Grandfather, why is it that even though I'm 16, I can't do these things? You know, why can't I do the stuff that the adult does? Grandfather say, well, you're not there yet. Show them in that circle. You're, you're still in your summertime. And you'll come around to the fall time. And these are the gifts of that direction and that time. So you got to pay attention. Because as you go through that fall time, young person, you can miss it if you're not paying attention. And then you'll have to go around again to pick it up. And then someone in the tribe in the circle says, but uncle, I'm 45 years old. I should be able to be an elder and be honored as an elder. Why is this not happening? And can you do something about it? You think that would get him anywhere? No. Because all the attributes that we learn, and grandfather's sitting there, drawing in the dirt, saying, but my son, you, you missed some things over here when you were an infant. And you lost your parents, you didn't have that nurturing that perhaps others had. And so that has caused you to act in some ways that haven't been so good. So now that you know that, it wasn't your fault that that happened, but now that you know that, it's important for you to go back and try to capture that. So you're going to walk through that winter time. You're going to learn some more things. You're going to come back around that wheel again. And here are some things to look for. By the way, an elder within the tribes is not called an elder because of age. It really has nothing to do with it. It is if they are, um, if they walk in a good and sacred way, if they live in a good and sacred way, if they um, serve the community, and any elder is going to be in service to their community. One of the most important traits for them to have is humility. 
without that. They're, they're not an elder. And without that humility, if, they're, if they have been an elder and considered an elder, without humility, it's enough to knock them out of there. So, aspects of being. This is where it gets really interesting. Now, if you had a piece of paper and you were going to draw on it, like the wheel that's there, or those of you that watch the uh, video later, sit down and, and draw these things out. Draw a circle with these things in each of the directions. <clears throat> in our emotional self, if we get really upset about something and we just have a hissy fit, is that, am I getting too Kentucky for you? <laughs> <laughs> then emotionally we may be out of control, right? Is that gonna affect us mentally, physically, spiritually? Yeah, it is. It may not affect those aspects of our being as much as whatever threw us out of alignment emotionally but it's gonna affect those other things. The next time something happens, you get upset about something, or you stub your toe, or you have a, a communication breakdown with your higher power, your source, your great mystery. Check and see how it's impacting those other things. Well, I'm really upset because Creator is just not, I pray and pray and pray, and nothing's happening. Anybody ever been there? Anybody gonna admit it? <laughs> Do you think that would impact me mentally? Sure. Emotionally, yeah. Physically, I'm going to start to notice that uh, stomach doesn't feel so good. Got a headache because that's that's messing with me. We've got to look for the meaning. What the meaning is for ourselves? Is that a cool picture or what? So. In the meaning, let's check one thing first, the movement in the medicine wheel. It's clockwise or counterclockwise. You either, you notice I've been starting in the east and going clockwise. For most of the medicine wheels, that's the way it goes. For most ceremonies, half the ceremonies maybe, that's the way it goes. Uh, anybody been to a powwow? Uh, Native gathering. Okay, when they're dancing in the circle, they may be going counterclockwise or clockwise. Lakota are clockwise, aren't they? Um, Cherokee are counterclockwise. That's because we prefer to have the earth under our feet, not like the Lakota. <laughs> and that's the kind of bantering that'll go on, okay? But the, the honest thing about it is, it's when in Rome. If I go out to Lakota, to one of the reses out there, and dance, I'm gonna do it their way. I'm gonna respect it and do it in their way. And that's the way it should be done. We, we tease each other otherwise. Um, and I guess the, the takeaway there is don't assume anything. If you go to any kind of gathering, watch, pay attention. That's the best way to be respectful. So the astronomical alignment, we've all been introduced to something perhaps we didn't know, that not only the medicine wheels, those big stone medicine wheels, are aligned, but we're doing that in practice anytime we draw a circle on the paper or in the dirt, 
and try to figure out where we are. Where's our balance? The teaching and learning comes from these things. Spiritual energy comes from these things. I, I can't even describe to you the energy that I felt at Chaco Canyon during that time of the year. I can tell you that the crow came up and talked to me. We had a nice conversation. I offered tobacco and we went into the kiva. Ritual direction, the way that we do our ceremonies, they may vary. Our health, if those things are out of balance, our health, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, can be out of balance too. The, pers the important thing about it is we need to be honest with ourselves as we look at these things. And inner healing. There's a lot of work in inner healing that people have done for, for a long time and are still doing. This can help. So peace and balance. Of course, everyone in this room and everybody watching the video, you are here in the center. It's perfect and all is right with our world. Yeah? No, that's not true. How many of you think you're dead center there? This is such a smart group. <laughs> we strive to hit center, but it's always in motion. We're always in motion. We're going to move on those axes back and forth. Some days we're going to feel a little more spiritually balanced and the others are maybe not, not paying as much attention to them. Maybe there's something that we did that... Um, had a hateful thought or something. Well, I might be backing down from that spiritual and I'm, I'm out of balance with it some. So at any point in time, this is what we want to strive for. Are we going to get there? Probably not. We're going to pass it along the way, but it's always in motion. We're always in motion. We're cyclical. We're not going to get there and stay put and be like, Waldo, you are here. Okay? We can use the medicine wheel to figure out what we missed. And again, this requires honesty with ourselves. If a person has trust issues at 27... If they're willing to go back and really look at things, and hopefully they're doing it with someone that's qualified to help them, they'll hopefully go back to that time in cycles of life when trust and autonomy are achieved. And rework it. Now, my feeling is that the medicine will is more like a spiral than a, a circle or a stack of circles, it might be, because we may go around and around this more than a few times. And we get over to this part, of the, oh, you know, we may get over here as an elder and go, you know, I forgot how to play. I need to play. I just want to get that silly putty out. Some people in the room have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> and play. You see how, what I'm saying about how we can use this? It's not rocket science. It may be space science. Maybe we have trouble with intimacy. Something happened. And in this period of being an adult is where that is built up, and if we had a rocky or bad relationship, then maybe we've poo-pooed intimacy. Well, we might be able to go back and learn some tools to help us to be able to pick some of that up in order to move forward. 
We can sit down with an elder, a trusted elder, and talk about these things. I put this up here just to show you some of the ways that symbols and things go together. The Anishinaabe, um, very creative. I'd like in uh, the part they have in here, in between the east and the south, letting go of security, learning to do that, to be able to step out a little bit more. Had the security of being that infant and in that young stage. And then letting go of belongings as we go into that adult phase. Those things become less important. Letting go of control. Oh, there's a big one. On our way to that place of wisdom, letting go of control. Is that necessary? Are we in control? Does anybody here think they're in control? I'm just ask him. <laughs> then letting go of recognition. That's why humility is so important with an elder. It's not about the recognition. It's not about us. If you serve this community within TS and you are always helping out and everything, that's great. It's great when anybody helps a community, and it's not about us. We do it because we care about what's going on. If our spirit and intent is helping us to do that, we're really accomplishing something. And it's not the recognition that's important. What's important is that we know that we've reached out and helped someone. Would you agree? You will see the medicine wheel in business use. Big companies have used this to be able to move their company along in a good way. Because when they were doing it in a linear way, it wasn't working. Can they do that? Can they take the Native American medicine wheel and do that? Yes, they can. It's a circle. They didn't take anything out of Cherokee Medicine Wheel, Lakota Medicine Wheel, Anishinaabe, none of that. They took the concept of, hey, if we put this in a circle, maybe we can see the connectedness. And what people, a lot of people don't understand is that there are prophecies, and I'll talk about those Saturday morning, that say that the tribes are going to come back together, and the people from all the different directions are going to come back together. And it's the indigenous people that are called into responsibility to teach what they know and to share and help the others share what they've learned so that we can survive as a people. It's some big stuff. So are we supposed to share this stuff? Yes. Are we supposed to take it and turn it into another religion and steal from the ideas that they have? No. That's very disrespectful. But can we take the concepts and use them in a good and sacred way? Absolutely. But don't throw uh, indigenous uh, wisdom and sacred things into a pot along with maybe four or five other things and stir it heartily and come up with another religion or way of doing things. That would be, that's the acculturation, that's the um, taking from, and that's what the tribes get upset about. Ask the difficult questions. Maybe there's something that's gone on in a person's life and they really don't want to go back and look at it. There's some hard things to go back and look at sometimes. But get to a point, if you have a difficult question to ask, make sure that you're in a place where you can do that 
comfortably and try to be objective and put it to that medicine wheel, put it to that circle of how did this affect me emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. What can I do to bring that emotional part back to a more balanced place towards that center? What can I do to bring that mental part back to a more balanced place? What about the physical? What's going on there? Have I let myself go because I was bummed? Because I was depressed? So maybe I want to try what are the things that I can do to bring myself back more towards center on that balance? And spiritually, when's the last time that I prayed or meditated or did a ritual, did ceremony? When's the last time that I did that? Seek guidance. <clears throat> Be very careful about what you find on the internet. I've been researching this for five months. When did we do that? When it was October of last year when we said we were going to do this. So at least five months. And I found all kinds of things out there on the internet that are not true. And I know for a fact they're not true. Because I know all. <laughs> now I'm lying to you. Seek guidance. Find someone that's trusted. And see what they say. See if they'll help. Strive for that balance. And every step toward that center balance that we make, it's important to celebrate it. <laughs> CJ, moving around the medicine wheel, I'm trying to decide if it's like shoots and ladders or if it's like chess. If you go back to infancy, if you go back to infancy for trust issues, do you need to continue around the wheel? Or have you covered that base and you can go back to like elder. In other words, if you go back to trust autonomy, do you need to continue around the wheel each time, or can you learn what you need to know there and then go back to elder? Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Okay. Part of the reason that a circle works is because we have a, a path, a direction. Now, the reason that the circles are done differently depending on the tribe is like the, the ones that go counterclockwise, that is in balance with how the earth moves, okay? The other ones that go clockwise are in balance with how the cardinal directions are, okay? So whichever way you go, commit to that. Commit to that direction. But if you're here, and you're thinking you need to go back over here to do some work, and your question, let's see if I'm getting your question right. Do you have to go that way, or can you just like zip across the circle? Okay. Um, I would say you're gonna wanna go through there because that time, uh, it is a, pl a great place of integrity and it's good for us, and it's also a, a place of introspection. So here you might be thinking, okay, I'm figuring out I need to do that. Sitting in quiet there may be helpful in helping you to get to that point. You might get some more tools there. It's not a bad thing. If you feel you're good, you can move a little faster. You get over there and you get that trust dealt with. You come around here and you think, okay, I got that used stuff down. I can go on. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. Thank you. I think if you look deeply at our <clears throat> culture, um, you mentioned Eric Erickson and you mentioned stealing things. Um, he spent six summers of his life on the Blackfoot Reservation and most of his child rearing and his psychology mm -hmm. is based on the Blackfeet. And then Abraham Maslow 
who took his self-actualization. He stole that from the Iraq Indians in Northern California. Ah. So this is evident in all of our, mm. a lot of things in the United States and in Europe, but yet they don't want to admit it who, where they got it from. Right. So just an FYI. Yeah. So study those guys and you'll go back and right directly to the simplest medicine wheel that you can find. And that's how they base their teachings. Thank you. I knew about Erickson. I didn't know about Maslow. Maslow, the hierarchy of needs. I, w I was just wondering if, um, you know, a lot of people make a labyrinth in their backyard or mm -hmm. something like that. Have you done that where you've created a, a walking medicine wheel? And is it helpful? I, would and be, is it helpful? Mm -hmm. I was thinking it might, it, you know, I, I really love the labyrinth, and I was thinking how if I had had that, uh, you know, it would even be helpful to walk the steps. You know, if you look up medicine wheel images, you will find where people have done that at, like, you could put a medicine wheel here on the property uh, to where people would go. Now, if I'm looking for information, if I'm looking to the ancestors and the elders, and I'm looking for that guidance, I'm going to sit in the south and look to the north and offer my prayers. So we can sit facing the direction where we're seeking guidance from. And yeah, you could do that with doing your own medicine wheel. Have I personally done that? No. Um, and it's more physical reason than anything. Uh, I love a labyrinth. A labyrinth is a great thing. I can't walk them because I can't have my head down to watch where I'm going long enough to do that. <laughs> and then I trip. And that doesn't feel good. Uh, but yes, you could do that. You all could have a medicine wheel where you are. Uh, and it would be a great, um, you know, even if you have a fire pit, but you decide on the colors that you want or the directions, or at least mark the directions of east, south, west, north, then anyone could go out there and look to those directions and sit and pray and meditate. Yeah, you could. We've got one fire pit that's for um, fire ceremonies, yeah. you know, and then we've got the fire pit for the sweat lodge, you know, and I never thought about marking out the directions for the fire pit be where we do sing where we do songs and, you know, mm -hmm. singing and so forth, but that makes a lot of sense. I think, now I was not raised on a reservation, I'm um, a Cherokee on my mother's side, my grandmother and my grandfather, um, and English on my father's side, and Irish on my father's side. I do, yes ma'am. So that's how I was raised, uh, not on the reservation, but when my mother and I uh, found the uh, grandma kept saying, you know, we're Indian. Well, not everybody was listening to grandma up in those days, but she was right. And we went and we found the proof. <clears throat> I was ordained as a Christian minister in 1997. And in about the same time, in that three year period, I was really getting into, my mother and I both were searching. And there were things that started to come to me. And very long story short, I've embraced the Cherokee traditions and my uh, ancestry. And I practice the ceremonies and do the rituals. And I'm still an ordained minister. But I found a way for them to peacefully coexist. Living in the indigenous teachings, living in that way, practicing those ceremonies, trying my best to walk the philosophies and the principles, laws, and values, makes me a much better minister and a much better Christian. So to put those things out there, you know, have those directions, there's nothing wrong with that to give us 
guidance in trying to be the very best that we can be. That's really our job. Everybody's job. Be the best that we can be. And in that, find our niche, find our purpose. Find the guidance that you need. I'm always looking for guidance. When I say to you, the more I know, the more I know I don't know, I live by that mantra. Because it does keep me humble. It keeps me open to, wow, I learned something new today. Cool. This is a great place to be. I'm definitely in my springtime right now. I just had a comment that I really like using the labyrinth too. And to me, the medicine wheel and the energies of the different directions are energies. So sometimes when I'm in the center of the labyrinth, I, I honor the directions. Mm -hmm. I, I might look to the directions for wisdom when I'm in the center of the, the labyrinth. And so I kind of, combine the two, the labyrinth energy and the medicine wheel energy together sometimes? In the way that you just explained that, uh, I think that's perfectly fine because um, no one has the, the closed market on east, south, west, north. They exist for all of us. And as you saw in all these different medicine wheels, each direction may mean something different to all of us. So if you've identified this is what this means to me in this direction, and you make that part of your ritual and your ceremony, there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's when things are mixed, not in a good way. Um, and there's a lot of new age stuff out there and, and the, where it can lead to, and nothing against new age, but some of them have been terribly irresponsible. If you remember the people that were killed in the sweat lodge, several people killed in the sweat lodge a few years back. And the person, uh, first of all, was charging them great money to go to a sweat lodge, which is absolutely wrong. Um, they didn't know what they were doing, and they made uh, a firebox is what they did in putting that sweat lodge together. Their spirit and intent was not uh, in a good direction, in a good way. Their purpose was to make money. And people died because of it. And they mixed things and they did ceremony that they shouldn't have done. That's when the problem comes in. But to do what you're talking about, that that is, your spirit and intent in doing that is very good. And you have as much right to claim east, south, west, north as the rest of us. Is that good? <laughs>